Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny, Queen Sugar, Season 4, Episode 10, Oh My Mare. The writers give us a little breather before we transition into the crescendo for the rest of the season. I'll give my review that's coming up next. So we open with the scene at Vi's, Prize, Pies <laughs> Diner, and Vi is saying hello to everybody, asking them that they enjoy their meal. She's walking around, and she sees Nova sitting in one of the booths, and she says, look, you not, you know you're not supposed to be here. And Nova's just like, look, I'm going to keep trying. I know you're upset, but it's been a month, and we haven't spoken. And she says, look, you opened up a can of worms to things that I went through in my marriage, in my life, that I had put to the side or either I dealt with, and you just dug up this whole world of pain for me. So, you know, I don't wanna see you right now. So Nova was just like, I was wrong. I should have brought this to you. I should have asked your permission. And Vi says, well, if you would have came to me with this information, if you asked for my permission and I said no, what would you have done? And Nova gives that pause, like, kind of like, dang, you know, you're right. I would have went on ahead and did the book anyway, regardless if you gave me permission or not. I think that was a big reality check on how selfish she is and how much she needs to work on herself. Micah meets up at Darla's house to pick up Blue so they can spend some time with one another. They're going to go to a carnival, so they're really excited. Darla, she's folding clothes, she's cleaning up, and as she's doing that, she receives a call. We don't know if it's from a friend, and we don't know if it's her mother. I think it was her mother that called her, and she says, hey, your friend Jordan is coming into town, and Darla doesn't look too thrilled. She has this look on her face like, oh, great, she's coming into town. Oh, from that conversation, that kind of lets the audience know that whoever is on that other end, even if it's her mom, has this perception that this friend is just so wonderful and she better spruce herself up because this special person is coming into town because she made the initiative to call Darla and tell her that she was on the way. But from body language and how Darla was behaving, she was not happy about this special friend coming into town. We then have Charlie. She meets up with Nova at Vi's Prize, Pies, and Diner. And she says, here, look, this is for your birthday. I know it's a week away. It's not even here yet, but let me give you this present. You know, kind of like trying to mend the ends of what's not spoken between the, the two of them. And Charlie is making that initiative because she's very thankful that Nova, Nova came to her rescue when she was at the bar and, and crazy drunk. And she wanted to say, hey, thank you. And she gives her the present. And you can tell Nova she's really sad and she's just like, look, I don't even know if I need to celebrate my birthday. It's just been so much. I've caused so much ruckus. And Charlie says, you know what? There's some time before the race where we can take a little breather and kind of go to our own, own corners and get information together and just breathe. How about you and I take a trip? Kind of like a sister's trip. And they agree. They hit the road. They're slowly trying to develop a conversation. And Nova says, look, with everything that you're going through, keep in mind that I am a journalist. And if there's information that you need to know, just let me know. And Charlie has that look where she's just straightforward driving like, girl, I hear you, but I'm not listening, whatever. <laughs> they get to this retreat that looks like it's set up for people who want to be deep in meditation and breathe and talk. There's not even a restroom. There's like an outhouse area that they're not too happy about. They have a nice little area that's set up outside. They're walking around and then it starts to churn the wheels and starting very important conversations conversation and Charlie says look you and Remy like what was up with that because they haven't touched up on it because they were so upset with one another and they haven't we haven't heard them to discuss it ever since and Nova says you know we were compatible and I figured since you two weren't intimate that that was the green light that he was available which was like okay Nova 
And she later explains that she thinks impulsively without thinking. She doesn't communicate with people and that's something that she has to work on. And Charlie says, well, how did that work out for you? Doing what you wanted to do without communicating and then coming back later to apologize as if that's going to help the situation. How is that working out for you? And Nova says, look, I'm learning myself and I know that me acting on an impulse and what I want and what I need wasn't the best move. I said in several reviews ago that Nova is very selfish and acts on impulse. She had such a strong desire to have a bestseller book and to do certain things that I said she would do whatever is necessary to come out with that with a book. And I was right. She comes out with a book when she has writer's block to put personal things about her family without them knowing. So we know this whole time that Nova did by any means necessary, anything that was required so she could get a bestseller and I was right. We then cut to Darla and this friend whose name Jordan. We don't know who she is, but we start to hear the conversation, the one-way conversation, rather, that she's telling Darla, oh, it's great to see you. Do you remember when we used to get so lit and drunk and we used to go to all these parties? It's great in D.C., but I'm thinking about moving here. And Darla has that look like, oh, you moving here? Oh, she has that look of concern. And she says, yeah, you know, the last time we party, you know, we party so hard. And I remember distinctly this party to where we were just so messed up and I was drinking and we were getting high and then you were getting high. So much so, girl, that you were high and you went upstairs with two gentlemen. You immediately see Darla go into this blank recollection, trying to remember what is she talking about. I do remember that I was drinking, but I don't remember what you're talking about. She's like, yeah, and it was two guys, and you guys went upstairs, and Darla starts to have very miniature flashbacks of thought thinking, I don't remember that. I do remember drinking. I do remember that I was high, but I don't recall what you're talking about in me being in the restroom for over an hour with two men. You see the fear. You see the tears. You see her start to get jittery and thinking, I hope what happened didn't happen. I hope what she's telling me isn't true, meaning did I really go into a restroom and you're telling me I was intimate with two men and I don't remember that? She starts to panic. She's like, I, 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 I got to get out of here. I, I got to pick up my son. She finds any excuse to get out of there. And, you know, Jordan, she's unaffected because she's like, well, maybe she'll get back to me later. You could tell that she still hasn't reached her point of responsibility and reached that point of realizing that she's living a lifestyle that's out of control, partying all the time. It was very evident that they were childhood friends because she talks about how they grew up and your mom and my mom. So it's clear that this is one of those demons that I was talking about that she was running from. People that she knew during her childhood or either as she was older while she was in college, certain crowds and certain groups that she wanted to be around. Jordan also expressed that your mom and my mom wanted us to live this perfect life and for us to do this and be this. Kudos again to myself. I had to say I could tell that Darla had the personality or developed a personality where she felt she had to be accepted because everything that she lived by was according to somebody else's expectation. Where she worked, where she went to, to school, this pressure to be perfect Patty. And Jordan was the confirmation to that and what I discussed earlier in other posts saying that I could tell because whenever she was, uh, whenever Darla was in a situation to where she didn't get attention or if it wasn't at that moment, i.e. Ralph Angel, when she saw him starting to move on and date, when she realized that Blue was at an age to where he was a little bit more independent, when she was at work and she started to not be accepted by her peers, that constant demon of 
wanting to be accepted and living up to everyone else's expectation does a complete boomerang in her life and she realizes that wow there is a lot i need to to, to do with my life and i'm so confused and such in a whirlwind i don't know what to do with myself she gets up she goes to a bar she fights it for as long as she can as she can she goes to that bar <laughs> that guy that bartender sat down the shot she looked at for five seconds and she started knocking them back and as a viewer you're thinking alcohol or weed is that gateway into her going back into a relapse and you just hope for the best and hope that this is not the start to disaster Micah and Blue they are at an amusement park. They're having a good time. They're having their moments where they're just forgetting about everything and just trying to enjoy some sunlight, ride some rides, and have fun. And in between that, Micah is telling him, or asking rather, how do you feel about your parents seeing other people? Does it make you sad? He tells him it makes him sad. And Micah, in his way, trying to give a translation for someone his age and saying, look, look at the brighter side. You know, even though you'll be sad that your parents are t together and that they're dating, you'll have two Christmases, you'll have two birthdays, you'll have two rooms that you get to decorate. And if any time you feel sad, make sure that you call me. Make sure that you tell me when you're sad because I understand I went through the same thing with my parents. So they share that moment. They're walking around. Blue says, hey, I got to use the restroom. And he says, I'll go with you. He's like, I'm a big boy. I can do it. Micah's checking something on his phone. And as he's checking something on his phone, Blue has to go to the restroom so bad. Instead of waiting in the men's line for the, the men's restroom, he goes into the women's restroom. And I'm thinking, oh, please do not let anybody have a panic attack because they see a young boy in the women's restroom. Instead, Micah goes the other way looking for Blue in a panic walking um, along the park. Eventually Blue gets out of the restroom because now he's lost and he's looking for Micah and he sees a amusement park officer and he's lost and he says hey why don't you sit in the back of the patrol car uh, your cousin will find you just stay calm. We then see Micah he sees Blue in the back of the patrol car. He's like, oh, hey, that's my cousin. And the police officer's like, well, let me see your ID. And Micah's like, well, why is that necessary? I mean, I see my cousin right there. Can he just come to me? And he, the officer, puts his hand on his gun. It's like, wow, you feel threatened? Like, the outrageous audacity of it all and being forgetting your training and going straight into fear mode why why are you fearful we're at an amusement amusement park with hundreds of people here the child sees that he recognizes micah this impulse of an image of a black man once again showing the audience that this is the the exaggeration of not having officers on our side not having officers wanting and willing to help but anywho blue tells the officer look this is my cousin and you could tell micah he's just so over it he's sad and he's pissed and he's once again triggered by the event that happened to him earlier and being mistreated and, and suffering from someone who went through police brutality and he's over it they hug and they just want to go home so vi she's at the park She's getting her workout on, you know, after the young gentleman at her restaurant helped her with her, I guess, a Fitbit or whatever it is that she had to help her count her steps. And she sees what she thinks to be Darla, and she's out of it, and you could tell Darla is drunk. And she stops what she's doing, and she's like, Darla, is that you? And Darla is fumbling over her words. She's She's just mumbling and just, just kind of just wailing away. Clearly, she's drunk, and Vi helps her to get back home. So here is a transitional scene foreshadowing for the rest of the season. She gets Darla home, and Vi tells her, look, I know we've had our static back in the day, but I really want to know what is it that made you get to this point because... You've been doing so well and you've worked so hard. 
what happened? Did something happen recently that I don't know about? Or is there something you've been dealing with? Can you just tell me? And, you know, Darla's just like, I can't tell you. You know, like, we have not had this heart-to-heart -heart sisterhood where I feel like I can tell you anything. And Vi's just like, look, you have to let it out. You have to say what it is that's on your heart because something pushed you to start drinking. You went from functioning and taking care of everything, going to work and becoming super responsible and starting this routine of doing so well. It had to be something to trigger you to where you just went to drinking. She goes into this very tough dialogue in her realizing that the party in which she thought she was just high and slept with someone at a party in the restroom to having more clarity and understanding because Jordan gave names of who she specifically went into the restroom with. And Darla has a recollection that I don't remember that. I didn't give consent, and I don't even remember saying no, but I don't remember being intimate with two people and being in the bathroom that long with, with someone. And Vi and her start to connect because Vi puts her human face out there and says, basically, I understand. I was with somebody, and I was married, and that happened to me. And even though I would say no, he would keep he would keep going he would keep doing it and i figured well maybe this is something i'm supposed to do because i'm married and she said i was young and didn't understand what was going on and i just dealt with it so we understand that vi even though she was married she was being raped and it became she became numb to the situation and they immediately start to develop a connection and vi says look if you don't remember, if you were out of it, that's rape. And even if you didn't say no, you didn't consent. You don't even remember. So it's that acceptance and realization Darla has and where she's just like, wow, I got raped. And it's very tough for her. So Vi ends up calling Ralph Angel and says, look, I need you to come over to Darla's now, and I need you to come alone. And he comes over. And before that, Micah and Blue, they come back over there. And, you know, he expresses to him that, you know, Blue let the cat out of the bag. Like, oh, I sat in the back of the police car. And, you know, of course, Ralph Angel's like, what? Uh oh? <laughs> but, you know, Micah says, I lost sight of him for a bit. A cop found him. And Blue says, and the cop wasn't nice to Micah. And they tell him, look, you had an experience, which is real, but don't let that define who you are. And they tell him, here, we're, we're here for you, you know, Hollywood and Prosper and Ralph Angel, but make sure you communicate with us. In other words, don't go through this alone. So Ralph Angel goes to Darla's home and Darla expresses that very, very cautiously and just almost to the point to where she doesn't even know what to say. And Ralph Angel has tears in his eyes and saying, I don't even know what you're about to say, but I'm scared. And Vi's holding her hand and she's giving her the nudge to go ahead and let it out and let him know. Darla ex expresses to Ralph Angel about the night where Blue was conceived and she's letting him know she was unaware and she doesn't say the word rape but she says that I don't remember and there wasn't one guy, there was two. So Ralph Angel immediately comforts her and tells her we're gonna get through this. And you see this wave of comfort come over Darla to where she just, the presence of a man telling you that everything is okay, and not just a man, a man that cares for you. A man that completely could have just said, well, I'm done with you and that's not my kid. Bye. But someone that's been with you and standing with you, once again, foreshadowing. I said in the previous review, when Darla and Ralph Angel sat with the counselor and they were discussing the matter of Ralph Angel not being the biological father of Blue, they painted this picture of comfort of them all sitting together it being hard for them to see each other with 
other people dating. That was painting this picture that even though they went through a rough patch, highly likely that they will be together again. Kudos again for another estimation for this show. So he tells her to get some rest. It's evident that Ralph Angel has spent the night on the couch because, because when he wakes up, he's folding, you know, like a blanket or something like that, and the sun is out. And when he wakes up, he has these missed calls from, I think her name is Disha, the girl, the lawyer girlfriend that he's been talking to. And he's like, oh man, because that night he had a date set up with her. So that means that he didn't call her, he didn't tell her nothing, he just didn't show up. And I'm thinking, uh oh. And he goes into her room and he tells her, it's early. I gotta go to work, but you sleep and it's okay, I'll look over you. And Darla has this, just this, just this halo around her of just being wooed by this beautiful black man and, and telling her that everything's gonna be okay. That presence of that male strong foundation of him being the leader of the family, such a big foreshadowing for this season. So we see that comfort, we see that develop, and that is the end of that scene. So there are three episodes left for this season. So far, I have been right for this entire season. Season, So much foreshadowing going on. This episode, not much really happened, but what it is is that it's developing this transition for the season's end. So let's recap all of the foreshadowing and all of the things that are brewing up for this crescendo at the end of the season. We have Nova expressing that she can do some digging for this company, that she's still a journalist that lets her know that she can do some digging around kind of in the backside because nobody's really keeping an eye on Nova when it comes to digging deep into this family because they see her as, well, she spins, spilled the beans about her own family. Clearly, she's not helping Charlie out. So we have that. We have this distant cousin that the mother never mentioned, that no one in the family ever mentioned, the father, which I think is really, really just weird. How come nobody mentioned her? The lies about her mom being cremated when she's actually been buried on family soil, foreshadowing there. The foreshadowing of Darla, Ralph Angel, and Blue working things out to be a family because we see in the previews that the new girl, the new girlfriend is upset that Ralph Angel left her high and dry because they've been developing something, right? They've been hanging out, they've been talking. Ralph Angel even mentioned in this episode that he wanted to take it to the next level. That's gonna be static there because those feelings between him and Darla are still there and it's still been simmering but it's been blinded by anger of him finding out that blue's not his biological son makes sense but you have to remember in real life sometimes the people that we care for and that we love or we get to know aren't meant aren't our soulmates they are just people that we meet along the way that might just ultimately become friends so what this can foreshadow and see is will this lawyer girlfriend think wow, were you just using me to help you in this situation when all along you've really liked Darla? So will she be there for Ralph Angel in that part? So we have some foreshadowing with that. Charlie. Charlie, we're giving Charlie a little rest on that episode because we've been following her story, but now we're getting more back into Ralph Angel giving Vi and Hollywood a rest while we focus on these other characters a little bit more. But once again, like I said in the, in the last episode, this was the foreshadowing for Darla for the last couple of episodes. And now we finally see that demon come full circle in things that she hasn't dealt with. Will she talk to her mom that was so adamant in Teen Jordan? Does her mother know that this person was such a negative influence in her life? Clearly not, because she's like, hey, Jordan's coming to town, not knowing that this is a person that really was not a positive influence in my life. Still up in the air, 
about Vi and Hollywood. I still don't feel great about those two. Hollywood has really been put on the back burner by Vi because she's been dealing with a lot and not that endearing sweet husband what can i do to meet you halfway so you can follow your dreams that's still lingering so this episode was an episode of transition not anything jaw dropping or exciting but we were finally able to see um darla face things that she's been putting under the rug and dealing with she still hasn't called her sponsor she did drink is Ralph Angel transitioning to be her man again? I don't know. <laughs> so it's a lot. Only three episodes left. So what do you think, you guys? Let me know what you three think. Comment, subscribe. Remember, I subscribe to anybody who subscribes to me. Click that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram at that same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Only three episodes left. Let me know what you think. Bye.